This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I used Squarespace to build both Basics with Babish and BingingWithBabish.com. On the sites, you'll find recipes, equipment lists, other news, and updates. All beautifully designed, if I do say so myself. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting Squarespace.com slash Babish. Irgendeine Idee zum French? Ist das vielleicht zu... Ja? Cajun Kickass? Das allerdings ist eine Umformulierung. Er dachte, um gastrische Notfälle zu melden, die vom die vom Original hergegangen Smoky Mesquite BBQ mit 3% mehr Rauchgeschmack und Ketchup. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at one of the best cold opens in TV history, the tater tot and sauce tasting scene from Breaking Bad. I'm just setting up these five fancy sauce cups because we have five sauces to make. And I'm going with cups because in my experience, all these sauces tend to be a lot runnier than those depicted in fiction. So going in presentation order, we're starting with honey mustard, which you might think only contains honey and mustard, but you'd be wrong. Because we're talking about a large corporation catering to Americans, we're gonna have a little bit of honey, but mostly, high fructose corn syrup. So we're doing one third of a cup yellow mustard, one tablespoon of corn syrup, and a scant two teaspoons of actual honey. Next up is French, which starts with ranch. Into a bowl goes a third of a cup sour cream, quarter cup mayonnaise, one tablespoon buttermilk, half teaspoon dried chives, half teaspoon dried dill weed, half teaspoon kosher salt, and half teaspoon garlic powder, plus a tablespoon and a half of chopped fresh parsley. Tiny whisking with great rigor to combine. Next up, the French dressing, which I was surprised to learn is a mayonnaise-like emulsion, starting itself with a third cup each mayonnaise and ketchup, an astounding three tablespoons of granulated white sugar, tablespoon white vinegar, two tablespoons apple cider vinegar, plus half a small onion roughly chopped go into the jar of a blender, where while they're getting blended, we're gonna slowly drizzle in a half cup of neutral flavored oil, like a vegetable or canola through the um, hole. And there you have it, French dressing, which isn't quite red enough, so I'm gonna add some more ketchup. And there you have it, French dressing with extra ketchup, which as predicted is runny. Next comes the one I'm most excited about, Cajun Kick-Ass, a greenish mayonnaise-ish looking emulsion. So to try to capture some of that Cajun flavor, I've got two ribs of celery, diced, half a small onion, diced, and half a small green bell pepper, diced, aka the holy trinity, along with two cloves of garlic, a half teaspoon each black and white peppercorns, and a couple sprigs each fresh oregano and thyme. These are headed in some cold vegetable oil that I'm gonna slowly and gently cook for about 10 minutes, allow to cool completely, and then strain the resultant infused oil, which we're gonna use to fashion a mayonnaise, but not just any mayonnaise, a kick-ass Cajun mayonnaise, because this stuff tastes good. Back to the blender, we're starting with one whole egg, one large clove of garlic, roughly chopped, half teaspoon of Dijon mustard, which I apologize, I'm using my fingers to dig out of the cup, not a great look, quarter teaspoon kosher salt, and one tablespoon of white vinegar. Then we're gonna go ahead and blend in the blender until blended, and once pretty smooth, start slowly streaming in one cup of our infused oil, creating a mayonnaise that is Cajun, but is it kick-ass? We need green color and we need a little bit of heat. Where are we gonna find that? How about this jalapeno in my hand? Half of it roughly chopped. Plus, in order to flavor, thicken, and green in things, maybe a quarter cup of the cooked vegetables from the infusing process process. Blend for about one minute until totally smooth, as predicted, just a little runny, and really very actually kick-ass. It's super flavorful, it's a little spicy. This would genuinely be a very pleasant condiment to eat with a thing. Next up, Smoky Mesquite BBQ. This begins with two-thirds of a cup of ketchup, plus a half teaspoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of wishy wor sauce, third of a cup dark brown sugar, three quarters of a teaspoon onion powder, half teaspoon paprika, two tablespoons each white vinegar, and of course, corn syrup. These guys are going to get corn syrup in there if it kills them, or us. About a teaspoon of kosher salt and a half teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, plus a couple tablespoons of water to safeguard against scorching. Now to get the smoke flavor in there, we're gonna use mesquite-specific liquid smoke, which, oh, I thought that would come out way more slowly. All right, no saving that batch because this stuff is strong. So this time, carefully-ish, pre-measure a teaspoon of liquid smoke. Tiny whisk until everybody's dissolved and cook over medium-low heat until it has a barbecue sauce-like consistency. Next up, ketchup, which we're gonna take from tomato to bottle to show you the process, or what I think is the process. First, we're gonna make homemade tomato paste, chopping and scooping the seeds out of six to eight large Roma tomatoes, which we're gonna place in a medium-high walled saute pan, along with the strained remains of the tomato seed pulp, which is apparently where a lot of the tomato flavor lives. Once you're done harvesting your last drop of orange-red snot, place over medium-high heat, cover, and bring to a simmer, uncovering once starting to bubble. Bring the heat down to medium-low and cook uncovered for 20 to 25 minutes until things are starting to look a little dry, but not too dry because we still want to puree the hell out of these things about three minutes on high speed to ensure that as much tomato as possible has been broken down into a liquid format, which we're going to press through a fine mesh sieve to catch any errant particulate needlessly into a bowl since we're just going to put this into a pie plate anyway, or the rimmed, wide, non-reactive 
reactive bakeware of your choice, which generally means no metal. Then this guy's headed into a 250 degree Fahrenheit oven for two to three hours, removing every half hour or so to give it a stir, tap it flat and put it back. Basically you want the tomato puree to be all surface area so it's constantly getting exposed to and caramelized by the heat of the oven. As you can see, I let it get a little too thin at one point and some of it burned, but I was determined to give it at least three hours in the oven so that I would end up with the thickest, richest, most delicious pip squeak of puree on the planet, which as you can see could only generously be called a third of a cup. To that, we're adding one tablespoon of brown sugar, a tablespoon of white vinegar, a quarter teaspoon each garlic and onion powder, an eighth teaspoon each mustard powder and celery salt, a sixteenth teaspoon each ground clove and allspice, and of course a teaspoon of the requisite high fructose corn syrup. Once again, I'm going to press this mixture through a fine mesh sieve to try to get it as smooth as humanly possible, and this might have the consistency of Sir Kensington's, but it's got the flavor of Heinz, which is right where I want to live. Now with all sauces negotiated, we can begin to tot our taters. Three large russet taters peeled and plunged directly into boiling water, which might seem counterintuitive, but we actually want the potatoes to cook unevenly over the course of about 12 to 18 minutes, at which point the outside of your potatoes should be cooked and the inside should still be pleasantly raw, which is going to give our resultant tots a varied texture. That's two back-to-back -back consonants, back-to-back, -back, very rare. Once these guys are cool enough to handle, we're going to commence to grating on the large holes of a box grater. And like I mentioned, this should give you a mixed bag of potato shreds and mush. And we definitely want shreds, but we don't want them to be too long. So I'm going to chop these guys up using a bench scraper until no shred exceeds 15 millimeters in length for a little German precision. Place these in a big old bowl, and then in a small old bowl, we're going to combine one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, a tablespoon of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons cornstarch, and a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Tiny whisk until homogenous, add to the potatoes, mix until evenly combined, and then it's time to fashion this mixture into pucks, for which I have this vintage falafel mold that Kendall found for me on eBay. They were clearly dealing with some type F 230-volt 50 hertz tater tots, so I'm going to whip up one batch, show accurate, in these little puck forms, which I might be poking fun at, but I think they're actually going to turn out better. They're like 90% percent surface area, which means a higher tot to tater ratio. But I also gotta make the cylindrical ones, so surprise, Napoleon Dynamite episode. Napoleon, give me some of your tots. No, go find your own. Come on, give me some of your tots. No, I'm freaking starved. I didn't get to eat anything today. Oh, God. Gross. Freaking idiot. Hey, hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish. For this week, we're taking a look at the tater tots from Napoleon Dynamite. First, we gotta make the potato batter and then shape it into tots. Just be sure to repeatedly dip your hands in water because this stuff is sticky. No matter how you tot your taters, they're headed into the freezer for at least an hour and up to a few months. This is both to crystallize the potato's cell walls or something, resulting in fluffier interiors, and to lend it some structural integrity as it plunges into some 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated fry oil for anywhere from three to six minutes, depending on the size and form factor of your tots. Same goes for the big boys. They might take a little bit longer to fry, so maybe drop your temperature down 10 degrees. Fish them out, allow them to drain on paper towels, salt them while still hot, and there you have it homemade tater tots. Something that, like the entirety of this episode, you should probably just buy. But let's pretend I didn't just say that and begin to plate up our sauce samples, making sure not to forget to integrate a little bit of ranch into the French, big dollop of my favorite, Cajun kick-ass, some smoky BBQ, and the only condiment that mimics the viscosity of its store-bought contemporaries, ketchup. Plate up the tots in a fancy glass bowl of some sort and commence to sampling with the thousand-yard stare of somebody who knows that they're well and truly f***. Now, each of these sauces did taste pretty good. Cajun kick-ass and French were definitely the standouts, but the real winner here was the tater tots. They taste just like the ones that you got in high school, which was often the best part of high school, but they had a more potatoey, less processed flavor. One thing I'll say is that in the context of this glass bowl, I am definitely pro-cylinder. The puck format, while novel and exotic, is very difficult to fetch out of a narrow-mouthed bowl with one's fingertips. Uh, got it. Now, folks, real quick, you might notice at the time of this episode's publishing that we're at 9.99 million subscribers. So just this once, I'm going to say something I've never said in the seven years of making this show. Here we go. <clears throat> Please like and subscribe. I can't, I can't do it. Just thank you all from the bottom of my heart, all 10 million of you. We've got some really fun and exciting episodes to celebrate in the coming weeks. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. They've been a great partner in supporting the Babish Culinary Universe and bringing my websites to life. From websites to online stores to domains and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. They also have SEO tools so that your site is getting found and searched by more people more often. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase. 